Hello everyone, let me show you how to use Odin Runes. I've already installed it, so when I click on it, the application starts. And when I click on the chat button, it will open this default chat file using the operating system's default text editor. So here you can append your prompt. It is totally up to you what text editor you want to use. Just make sure that you enable word wrap. And also it's useful if the text editor that you're using has this tailing uh, functionality so you can see uh, what's being appended to the file uh, in real time. Okay, I click on the chat button to submit my prompt and here it is the response. Odin Runes completely decouples uh, your chats from the underlying GPT service provider. So here you can see that uh, you can easily switch over to different uh, GPT service provider. Let's try Gemini Pro. I will click on apply to apply the new GPT settings. I will close the settings panel here and I will reuse the existing chat file uh, to add my follow-up prompt and uh, I will uh, click on the chat button again to submit this follow-up prompt. And here it is, the response from uh, the new GPT service provider. Notice that the identifier here uh, shows the underlying GPT service provider used for the response. So I will just repeat the same procedure with uh, Palm 2. I will add my uh, follow-up prompt and then I will click again on the chat button to submit this follow-up prompt. And here you see we have the response from Palm 2, chat Bison. Uh, at the moment, uh, Odin Runes supports OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo and Google's uh, Palm 2, chat Bison, and uh, Google's uh, Gemini Pro. But adding new integrations is as simple as implementing one interface, which I am going to talk about. So feel free to contribute and add your integrations. To integrate this with uh, other GPT service providers, all you need to do, as I mentioned, is to uh, implement uh, one interface. And that interface is this one right here. I call it... Um, wells of wisdom. I have implemented this for Google Palm 2 and Gemini API as well as the OpenAI API and you can use those as your uh, base examples to implement uh, your own providers. As long as you're able to implement this interface uh, you are able to integrate Odin rooms with whatever GPT service provider you want. Okay, let me show you something else that Odin Runes uh, helps you do. I will just copy this text here. And I will click on Add Context from Clipboard here. When I do that, you can see the copied text right here in the context. This is something that you can save and load independently from your chats. So you can reuse the context of one chat in some other chat. So let's create a new chat file instead of the default chat file. Uh, I will choose a name for this chat file and I will click uh, on save. As you see, the chat file is created. And now if I click on the chat button, I can see my bare new uh, chat file. The configuration of your text editor is totally up to you and you can have different configurations for different chats based on their uh, file extension. Okay, now don't forget that the context that we copied from the clipboard is still there. So let's see what this prompt will return. And this is the response. As you can see, you can have context completely decoupled from uh, chat and the underlying 
GPT service provider. So you can use the context uh, from one uh, chat in some other chat and using whatever GPT service provider that you want. So let's change the provider and uh, give a follow-up prompt. This is my follow-up prompt. And I'm going to hit the chat button again to submit my prompt. And here we go. As you can see, this demonstrates uh, a complete decoupling of these three components, the chats, the context, and the underlying GPT service provider. And you can mix and match as you wish. So far, I have shown you one way to capture a context, which was the most trivial and most commonly used way, which was using a clipboard copy paste. Now let me show you uh, another way to capture context, which is using OCR. This is useful when the text that you want to copy is not selectable, for example, is part of an image. So in situations like that, you can just use this feature and select the part of the screen that you want to capture using OCR. As you can see, we managed to capture the text. Uh, don't worry about the typo. Typos are not a problem for GPTs. They handle typos pretty well because it reminds them of their ancestors. So I'm going to just uh, remove the other one and keep the one that we captured using OCR. Let's try with this one now. I will close the settings panel and I will just uh, try to show you what I did before by removing all these extra parts. Notice how easy it is this way to modify your chat. You can literally modify any part of the chat that you want. So I will click on the, I will save this and click on the chat button now to uh, submit this as my prompt. And as you can see, we have the response back. I will do uh, a follow-up prompt to ask for more details like we did uh, before. And let's submit the prompt and bingo. As you can see, we got a response similar to what we got before uh, using a different way to capture uh, context. Let me now show you yet another way to capture context. This one is useful when uh, what you want to copy is not really selectable and also does not fit in one uh, frame, in one photo frame. Something like a chat conversation from a UI with limitations. Don't forget that whenever the text is selectable, copyable, that's the best approach. OCR is just the last resort. So let's see how this feature, OCR with scroll shot, uh, can help us with situations like this. Like before, I select the area, and as you can see, in that area, it uh, performs OCR while scrolling all the way down. So it's, it OCRs its way uh, through the entire uh, scrollable area. And it will stop automatically when it reaches the end of the scrollable uh, area. And as you can see, we have captured our uh, text here, and uh, we are ready to test it out. So I will just go here and again, delete the parts which I don't need. And write my prompt. And now I will submit my prompt by clicking on the chat button. Bingo, we get our response back. And uh, again, let me reiterate that this is a last resort when the text that you need uh, is not selectable and also does not fit in 
uh, one OCR frame. Now is a great opportunity to show you one of the many benefits of uh, decoupling. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm going to edit the response uh, that the GPT uh, provider gave. I uh, delete a few lines there. I add a line here uh, and I put something like a placeholder, for example, something that resembles a placeholder. And I submit, I uh, write a follow-up prompt here and ask it to revise by filling the placeholder. Let's see what happens when I submit my follow-up prompt. This gives you a lot of flexibility because uh, more often than not, we need to edit uh, and revise the responses generated by the GPT. And yeah, bingo, as you can see, the, uh, our edits are applied and the placeholders are also filled accordingly. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. So far, I have shown you how to uh, add uh, context using uh, uh, different ways, including the clipboard and OCR based methods. In future, I will uh, also uh, add features uh, and add support for uh, multimodal uh, context so that you can use that with uh, multimodal uh, GPT service providers this, for this stay tuned. Another tip worth mentioning is that if you want to create a new chat file or you want to load a chat file that you have created before, you can use these two buttons, new and open. Every time you start Odin Runes, it uh, uses the default chat file. Most of the time that's uh, good enough for me because I delete all the unnecessary parts there. And I just uh, append my prompt. This prevents a lot of unnecessary chats from being created. And uh, finally, to show you yet another benefit of the coupling and uh, to also uh, show that Odin Runes is cross-platform, uh, let's try it on Ubuntu. Everything is same as before, except the fact that here my favorite text editor is different. So when I click on the chat button, uh, the default chat file is opened using uh, this text editor. And uh, the rest is like before, as you can see. I add a follow-up prompt here. And like before, I click on the chat button to submit my follow-up prompt. And you can see the response which you received. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more updates.